Virtual Institute provides world class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Institute How we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands on project work, cloud tech stack, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Institute has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinstitute.com. Okay, so so today we'll be discussing on. I started recording. Today we'll be discussing on HTML, and if time permits, we'll discuss on JavaScript. And just a second. Okay, then we'll get started. So for HTML uh, today, uh, I'll just show the slide which I have showed you uh, when discussing uh, when I gave demo class. So let's go back to the the slide which I have uh, showed you for the demo class. So let me go to the desktop. Just a second. Now, let's quickly summarize why you need to learn HTML. So if you want to design anything on the UI, for example, uh, for example, if you're seeing the screen, so for example, I want to design an online shopping portal. If I want to design an online shopping portal for user interface, so whatever you are seeing in the browser, so, so this is a drop down list and this is a text box and this is a label and this is a button. So anything if you want to display on the user interface, these controls are called HTML controls. So HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. So if you want to design anything in the user interface, you have to learn HTML. So HTML is very key thing if you want to design a beautiful UI, user interface. And when you, so for example, I told already like if, if I assume that the price of each Parker pen is $50, price of each Parker pen is $50. Now, now the moment you select five Parker pens and click, click on save, your shopping cart will be showing the money as $250. So here some calculations are happening. So the calculations will normally happen happen using the programming language. So we already learned uh, learned 90% of programming language C sharp. So so for any business logic, so this is called business logic. For any business logic, you need to learn any programming language. And for user interface, we need to learn HTML. And to save the data details in the database, we need to learn SQL Server programming. So today we are going to discuss on HTML to design these controls how to do all these controls. Okay, so with this, um, let's get started with HTML. So I'm going to create, I'm not going to use any editor for HTML. You can use your Visual Studio, but let's use Notepad. So I'm going to, uh, in my desktop, I'm going to create a new folder called HTML. Okay, in this HTML, so let me create, right click on this, new, text document, I'm going to name this as one.html and remove this the extension. So the moment you change it to HTML, you should see that the icon will get changed to Internet Explorer or your default browser. If the icon is not changed to your default browser, that means that you are still seeing your text file. Okay, so I repeat again, the moment you change your file extension to .html, the icon for that HTML should change to your default browser. If it's not changed to your default browser, that means the file is still a text file. So to see the extensions, what you need to do is, I told this in the second class or third class. So if you want to see the file extensions, you have to go to organize and folder in the search options, search options, and you have to go to view and you have to select, you have to unselect this one. You have to unselect this one, hide the extensions for known file types. You have to uncheck this one. Okay. When you uncheck this one, you will see the extensions. Okay. If, if you don't uncheck this one, see what happens here. I'll check this checkbox and I'll show you the difference. So I am checking, I'm, I'm, I'm selecting this checkbox. Click on apply. Okay. Click on okay. See now I'm not seeing the file extension. So what normally students will do is they will right click on this new text document 
and they will create this uh, one dot or two dot h two dot txt and then what they will tell me is they will right click on this they will do a rename they will select rename and they will do two dot html and they will ask me i renamed it but still my icon has not changed what shall i do so so actually you renamed it dot html you are seeing it as two dot html but it's not a html file so it will have two dot html dot txt when you do right click on this and properties you will see that it's a text document it's a text document it it is not a html file for that what you need to do is you need to click on organize so it is not showing you the extensions because i have selected the checkbox do not show the extension for known file types so for that what i need to do is the one way to do this uh, one way to do is you have to go to organize and folder and search options and i need to go to view and i need to uncheck this one hide the extensions for known file types i'm unchecking this click on apply and okay now you will realize that okay it is not a it is see now i'm seeing 2.html.txt so so if you want to rename it you need to click on f2 and delete this .txt okay now you are seeing 2.html okay so so this is about how to rename to .html and the other way to do that is what the other way to do that is right click on this new text document i have 3 3 here So if I want to rename this to .html, what I can do is I can open this, and then I can actually do file save as, and then I can type here three. I can select here all files, and I can type here three dot .html in double quotes. I'm typing here three dot .html, and I'm doing it in double quotes. Okay, so this is one way of doing it. Select all files for sure. And view 3.html in double quotes and click on save. So that will also create in HTML file. After that, you can delete this old one. Okay. So just now we learned about um, three ways for, I mean, two ways for renaming a file from TXT to HTML. Okay. So once I create this HTML 1.html, I'll right click on this, open with Notepad. Open with Notepad. If you are not seeing this, right click on this, open with notepad, you can do this way. So Windows R, open notepad, and then drag and drop this. Drag this and drop it onto the notepad. That's it. Now now you can notice here that this file is 1.html. Okay. Let's get started with HTML. So for those who already know HTML, what is the code for a text box? Do not Google it. You could tell from whatever you know. What is the code for HTML text box? HTML text box. We don't use button for a text box. So what is the code for HTML text box? First of all, what is text box? Yeah, input type equal to text and name equal to name. Okay, perfect. Okay. So now, before getting started with this, let me ask some questions on different controls we had. So Windows R, MS Paint. Okay. So so now, first I have I have something called name in in my web page, and and if I want to design this. So what is this control called? all of you so I saw only one response so this control we call it as text box okay now now the second question so I have here something called branch I have to select uh, electronics branch or computer science branch or whatever branch I have to select here for that I have something called like this I have something called here so what is this is called I, I am seeing response from few of you so I will see an option here and when I, the moment, so this is not a checkbox, this is called a drop down list. So the moment I click on this, I'll have multiple options. So I'll get a drop down, I'll get a drop down list. So I'll, I'll see the values like this. 
okay i'll get an option to select from multiple values so this is called a drop down list now now the other one i'm going to ask now here i have i have medium uh, either it can be english or french so what is this called so i'll have a small circle and i can select only one option from this so what is that is called yeah this is called this is called a radio button so so this is called a radio button radio button is normally used for selecting only one option from multiple options so this is called english or french so this is called radio button so the first one is a text box where you will have options to enter some values and the second one where you can select some value from multiple values that is called a drop down list and the third one and the third one you can only select one value from the two options that is called a radio bo radio button and and we have something called hobbies and in this hobbies we have we have options like uh, you can select one or more options so you will see a small small box like this and you will see some options so this is called what is this yeah i'm not seeing the response from jesse Yeah, I'm seeing. Okay, so this is called. So if I have one checkbox, I mean this is a checkbox. So I can write here cricket, and I can add some more options, whatever options I want. So maybe I can add one more option called uh, chess or whatever. Okay, so the difference between radio button and the checkbox is so. So here. So this is a radio button where you can select only one, only one thing, only one option. But whereas in checkbox, either you can select this one or you can select both the options. So that is called checkbox. That is the difference between checkbox and and the radio button. And then you will see some one more thing called where you can enter your address. Okay, so where you can enter the address, you will see a something called a big text box. What is this one? So, so anyone has any idea on this? What is so? I got only one response. This is not a message box. And I got one correct response from. This is not a list box. Yeah, I got one response from Nikhil, and I got one response from. But uh, both are correct. So this is called a text area. So this is called text area. So I'll I'll quickly summarize. So so whatever you see here. So this is a text box. This is a drop down list. This is a radio button. This is a checkbox, and this one is text area. Okay, and and what will be there at the bottom? So let's assume that at the bottom of this page. So, or let me put this way. So, let me copy this. Let me move this here, and let me move this a little bit up, and let me move this here. Okay. So now I have at the bottom here. So I'll have something like this, and I'll have here. So what is this one? Yeah, so that is, yeah, all of you are correct. So that is, that I'll I'll be having some text here. So I'll have something like this save. That is a button. So this is a form. So so I'll have. We need to design this page right now. So by the end of this class, you should be very clear in designing this in HTML. Okay. So let's get started. So we are going to design this form and and pure static form, and we'll see how we can do that. Okay. So let's get started. So so first I need to write here. So I need to write here name. And addition to that, I need to write here what I'm seeing here. I need a text box. So for text box, the code is I need to give here input input type. Is equal to text, and I need to give some name. 
for all the controls so this is called a control so for all the controls in HTML you have to give a name for it so you have to give a name for it because imagine you have three four text boxes you have to differentiate between them so you have to give a name for it name I normally give like this txt so it is a text box so I'm giving txt txt as a prefix txt and this text box is for name so I'm giving name okay so I, I close the input tag so this is how we need to write so I need to give input type is equal to text for text box and name is equal to txt name txt name and close the input tag so if I save it and if I open in browser so let me double click on this so if I open in browser I can see that here so I have a name and I'm doing a text box so here I can enter Meghna or whatever so this is the use of a text box so text box we the simple code is input type is equal to text so I'm done with this name so so next I need a drop down list for I need a drop down list for branch so so let me select branch and here for a drop down list so the code HTML code for those who knows it without doing Google can help me here you should not do Google for a drop down list what is the code for a drop down list okay so I need to write here select drop down list alone in HTML it's a bit different so select name is equal to I need to give DDL DDL branch and then I need to give here option and and I can give here I can give here um, what will be the branch electronics and see here if I'm giving something wrong so let's see whether I'll get it or not so I'm giving one option so let me give multiple options and then close this select okay so let me save it and then refresh it and see whether I'm getting this or not I'm getting it okay so I got a question so do not have type for this okay so for for this one for uh, whatever you are seeing here we don't have input type we have the tag called select tag so normally for other controls we have input type but for this one we have a different syntax so which is uh, which is actually here we need to give like this we need to give select and we need to give some name for it and inside that we need to give option this is the code for drop down list so I can write here computer science this this itself is little different okay so this is how you need to write here what if if I, I have another question um, if I want to see the branch below name okay good question so if you want to see the branch below name yeah that is how we normally wanted to see we don't want to see name and branch or anything to that so we need to add a br tag br tag is we need to add like this okay so in C sharp or any other programming languages we have something called slash m so so here we don't have slash n we need to use the br tag br is called break tag so when I use br tag and I can refresh it I can see that uh, this is these are different so it's almost like touching it so if you don't if you want to have some other gap some more gap you can use another br tag you can save it you can save it and then and then I can actually I can rename I can double click on this see now I can see this properly name and branch I can select whatever branch I, I need okay so I got another question what is txt name and ddl branch so I'm giving a name for it so even this is not required even if you don't give this it will work for you but it's always a good practice to give some name for all the controls so that so the reason why I am giving this here txt is you can give simply name you don't need to give txt I normally give txt prefix with txt because in case if I see this by seeing this itself I should be able to tell what control is this if I see this name itself I can tell okay this is a drop down list because the name is DDL 
for a text and giving for a text box and giving PHP name. Okay, so it's a good practice to prefix with whatever control you want so that by seeing the name itself you can tell this is a text box. Okay, so so let me put here give an option and type here select branch. Okay, and here I'm going to put here option um, electrical. Okay, and then so now if I save it and if I refresh it, you can see that I have proper name and I have select branch, so I can select whatever branch I want. So this is how you normally give for HTML HTML drop-down list. Okay, now what is next one for us? So we have something called radio button for medium. So for that, what you need to do is you need to type medium. And remember, I had to give a br tag. Otherwise, I'll get the radio button adjacent to the drop-down list. So I need to give a br tag. And for medium, what I need is input type is equal to radio. Input type is equal to radio and name is equal to rd medium and i'll close this and i'll give so what is that first i need to give english and i need to close this input so let me save it and see the difference so let me save it and check whether i'll get this or not so i'm getting here one radio button with option english so i need to get another radio button so for that i need to go here and i need to give I need to give another one. So remember, um, in for radio buttons, if you have multiple radio buttons, you have to give the same name. So so here I'm copy pasting it. I have to give the same name for both of this. If I give a different name, I'll show you what happens. So I need to give this here friend. So I gave same name now. So let me save it and then go to HTML. So now I can see that I have two options. So when I click on I'm going to select only one of one of these. So that is the use of radio button. So you can only select one option. So you cannot select both the options. So by if you don't give the same name here, for example, if I'm giving RD medium, and if I'm giving some other name here, RD medium one. So if I save it, so I I I can able to select both the options. So I don't want to do that. So see here. I'm able to select both the options, which I, I don't want to select both the options in that case. For that is the reason why you have to give same name for radio button. Okay. So you want to select only one option, so so you have to give the same name for both the radio buttons. So input type is equal to radio, name is equal to this, and inside this you're writing English. Okay. So this is how we need to write for for Actually, when you are using Visual Studio, you don't need to remember all these things. See now, when I use Visual Studio, but but don't do it in Visual Studio at least for today, uh, so that you can remember the tags. So it's always good to remember the tags. So at least very few tags, not all the tags. So so file new project. So till now we used to select C sharp console application. So all the time we are doing C sharp console application, but now what you need to select is you need to select um, for those who are having Visual Studio 2013, they need to come down, they need to select Web and Visual Studio 2012, and then need to select ASP.NET MP Web application. For those who have any previous version of Visual Studio, they can simply select Web, and inside that they can select ASP.NET MP Web application. So select this ASP.NET MT web application, click on OK. Once you select ASP.NET MT web application, all you need to do is you can right click on this web application, right click on this web application, add new item. So you need to click on add new item. You can actually select or very simple, I'll, I'll tell the other way. So let's not worry about creating this project now. You might get confused at this stage. Okay, let me open this Visual Studio. 
and let me open this file whatever I have in Visual Studio. So so let me minimize this and copy this part. And here in Visual Studio file, open open file. I'm just opening this file in Visual Studio. So open this. I open this. So now I can see here this these things. I don't need to type all these things. If I want a checkbox or if I want a drop down list, I can actually um, see here I have all these controls. So what I can do is I can simply uh, drag and drop it. For example, text area or for example, uh, select. See here. When I do a draw, drag and drop, for me it is showing already select ID is equal to something or name something. Or when I do a drag and drop input, I'm seeing this input ID equal to this. So, so the only difference is when you do a drag and drop, you will see ID here. But normally we use name for text box control. Even you can use ID also. Anything should be fine. So, so, so when you do a drag and drop, it it is showing ID, but you are doing. So that is a good thing about using uh, Visual Studio. You don't need to remember all the names. But I strongly recommend you don't use Visual Studio for today. So use uh, use Notepad so that uh, so that you can remember these tags. Okay, while practicing this today, uh, today's assignment is you have to send me whatever I'm doing it today in the class. All of you should send me, so this is my mail ID. So you have to send this uh, assignment for me. So so this is my mail ID, I'm, I'm just bringing again. Okay, okay. So this is about radio button and and now we'll see the next one which we have here it's a checkbox so for checkbox we need to select hobbies so let me get let me give two br tags and here i'll give input type is equal to checkbox name is equal to chk ticket and then i'll give ticket and then input okay so so let me see whether i get this option or not if you give something wrong, right, you will you will not be able to see the proper output. So let me double click on this. I'm seeing the checkbox ticket. Okay, so so only thing which I missed here is I need I need to put here my the word hobbies. Okay, so and then I need one more thing. So let me copy this. And for checkbox, it doesn't matter whether you give the same name or different ma different name, but always give different name because you have different options can be selected so so i'm giving here chk cricket and the other one i'm giving chk chess why i'm giving chk is this is a checkbox this is rb because this is a radio button and ddl because this is a drop down list okay so so now here i'm giving chess so let me save it and the next one which i have is address so for address what I need to do, uh, what I need to do is, I need to give. I don't have input tag for this address as well. For address, we have text area. So we have something called input. It's not input type. We don't have input type for address. We have text area. And rows is equal to. I need five rows and columns. False is equal to. I need thirty columns. And and I need to give name is equal to TA address. That's it. I need to close the text area. And let me give BX. So let me save it. And then go to HTML file, double click on this. See now, I'm seeing this. So anyway, I can actually increase the number of rows. So let me increase the number of rows, number of rows to 10 and number of rows. So it is rows. Sorry, I gave something wrong here. It is rows. I gave row there. It is rows. If I give rows, I'll see the difference. See now. Is it clear now so far? All of you? Not seeing any response. Is it clear? HQK Institute provides world-class online IT training 
staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. HKK Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands on project work, cloud tech stack, resume preparation and review, mock interview, robust syllabus, one time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions and live classes. HKK Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at hkkinfosys.com.